Here's a 2008 KTM 300 XCW. Sorry for the background noise. Um, but I was just going <clears> to <throat> look at this bike here for anybody that's looking for one of these uh, bikes in particular. Or if you're looking, if you're just trying to figure out what size bike you want or what would be good. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about these things. And uh, if you don't already know, or you ain't watched any of my videos, this is another 300cc bike, which I'm a huge fan of, or it's like 290 something, I think. But <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you some of the best things about it, um, what little bit there is of bad about it. And uh, I hope, you know, it'll help you if you're looking for one of these to kind of know what to, what to expect and how to compare them. Uh, you, if you've rode any any of the two-stroke bikes, you know, you kind of have this, you know, the same old cliche stuff that people are talking about, the old power band coming into the power band and, uh, you know, having to keep it revved up all the time or, you know, it's all or nothing. You either got no power or you got a ton of power. You know, you kind of hear all that kind of mess. But if you've rode the bigger bikes... Um, you know, especially the big CC two strokes that uh, Yamaha and Honda used to make, uh, specifically the CR500. Um, you know that that's a whole different type of two stroke there. I mean, you're when you talk about 85s, 125s, and even 250s, you know, you're you do get a lot of that <clears throat> no power to like massive amounts of power, you know. And, um, you know, when they're making their most. On top, they're really uh, mean feeling machines. But if I were going to compare, and if you've never experienced a big CC two stroke, then you need to, you really need to check one out because that's a whole different, it's a whole different game. You know, if you're big into woods riding, you know, there's not, you know, people are like, well, there's not classes for them. And well, if you want to race motocross, whatever. That's not my thing, but but if you want to do a little bit of everything, you definitely ought to consider these because they don't they don't make the four strokes. Um, they're more geared up for the motocross stuff anymore. I mean, you can get into the big six fifties and uh, some of those and uh, the L models and stuff in there. You know, still got a little lug and stuff to them, but <clears throat> some of the WRs and like the X models on the CRFs and ones like those on the Hondas, they, they're, they're a little more set up for woods, but they're still not an XR, if you know what I mean. But, uh, I'm sorry, I go to get on my nerves here. But anyway, these things have been around a while. This here is particularly an 08, like I said before. Um, they've, they've made them since back in the 90s and um, they've just been well known especially in hair scramble, ra hair scramble racing um, where I ride back home is a lot of woods riding there was a lot of guys rode these bikes I made the mistake when I was getting out of high school and had enough money to buy a, a new bike <clears throat> I'd rode XRs and for the most part XRs you know other than the smaller two strokes when I was learning, but, uh, you know, I was, we were big into hill climbing, not big into racing and, uh, hair scrambles and motocross and stuff. So big into hill climbing. And at that time it was all about the big CCs and it was all about the four strokes and, and, uh, that kind of thing. So I kind of did what I wanted to do, me and a buddy and, uh, bought one of the bigger KTM uh, four strokes. Uh, at the time it was a 505, a big motorbike, but they just, uh, they were set up for supercross. Had a real short super, short stroke on them, so they wound out really fast. They were one of the status things they ever rode on, but they just were unforgiving, um, really hard to get all the power to the back wheel. Uh, they just, they were tough. So anyway, 
father-in-law encouraged me to buy one of these and I didn't listen like an idiot. Should have because later on I rode one, loved it. But I ended up <clears throat> building a CR500 for hill climbing. It was on, I put on aluminum frame and everything and loved that bike. Which made me like these even more because these are a lot like the CR500s as far as having just smoother power. And you know, I know people talk about 500s and all you talk about is just, you think of a big oversized 250. And I mean, it is when you're, you know, wide open, but as far as like, you can tractor those things around in the woods. I don't care what anybody says. I've had one, rode one for years and they tractor great. These 300s are the same way. You know, a lot of people run recluse clutches uh, in them, but they've uh, got the 18 inch back wheel, which is key for the woods. They, uh, I think this one is geared 1350, pretty sure. Not sure what stock gearing is on them, but they used to make an EXC model of these that was really popular. Then um, they, I'm trying to think what year it was they came out with these XCs and XD, XCWs. The, you know, the little higher, I think the XCs set just a little bit higher than these, but this is the, if you're riding woods, this is the one you want the XCW. There's a lot more specs and info on the suspension that I can't really tell you about or get into details about, but as far as being set up for riding in the woods, this is, this is the setup here. This particular model's got a speedometer on it. It tells the hours and the uh, miles and stuff. As soon as you start rolling, it comes on. Or you can turn it on like that. It's a <clears throat> it's electric start and kick start, which is a plus. Again, back to the KTM that I bought, no seven. It was a the 505. It had electric start, which was awesome, but it had no kick start which was horrible in the woods. It was, there was nothing further from a woods bike. We just bought them, wanted to make hill climb bikes out of them. And um, they were that for big, for big hills. As long as you had a tire that would hook, you could, you could do some good on them. But there is no bike better or up until this point. You know, a lot of, now Beta's got a 300. You've got Husqvarna's got a 300 two stroke. Um, I think uh, shirko has got a 300 two stroke. So there's a lot of people that's gotten into that world because of these right here. This to me is kind of, was a class of its own specific, you know, there's specific things. It's kind of like a 700 John Deere dozer. They just have a class of their own and then everybody else kind of falls in behind. But anyway, if you are looking for the best all around bike and you've rode a little, if you want to ride a little wood, you want to ride a little track, you want to ride, um, whatever. This right here is the bike you want. They're just all around the best bike that you can have. I don't care, hands down. I'm a Honda man, I love KTM though too, but these bikes are just super hard to beat. And I think anybody that's rode these or um, has had one of these will tell you the same. I'm not, there's, I know these newer ones are, they make fuel injected ones now. I have yet to try one of those out. So hopefully I'll uh, get to at some point and do a little comparison or try out one of the betas or the some of the other ones uh i know some people that's got those others so i'd like to try them out you know so i'll have a little bit better idea but i'm telling you you, you just can't go wrong with one of these here the only thing that they are priced a little high used uh because they're just a good sought after bike but um you know you can find them between the 2500 to 4500 range depending on you know what year you get but uh yeah i hope this helped like i said i know there's a lot more specs and stuff on it but um you know feel free to look those up there's uh just there's really there's really not a whole lot better than this this is you know obviously the first thing that you'd want to do and this one's already got it skid plates on the, the pipe and and the bottom of the bike this has got a real good one on it. This one's been rode in the woods. I so knew what they were doing. And uh, don't have bark busters, but you definitely want some of those if you're riding a lot of woods. But uh, all around, these are awesome bikes. And uh, 
you know, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. But I've just rode a lot of bikes and uh, wasted a lot of money and a lot of time trying to get uh, trying to get the right one, and uh, I would have wasted or saved a lot of money and time had I listened to uh, my father-in-law and got one of these to start with. So I'm advising anybody that's looking for this type of bike this is this is you won't be disappointed so i appreciate you watching uh you can check out my other videos i've got some on some other bikes four wheeler stuff like that that i've come across hoping that they will help um, if they do be sure and like and subscribe and if you want to add any information that might help somebody or correct me just put them in the comments so thanks again for watching